bag itself, uh, wondering what the differences are between a standard orifice, viscous orifice, and the microtubing. Some of you have heard of microtubing. If not, then I'm going to give a little discussion on what the differences are. When we use microtubing versus orifices, and what applications do they work best versus not. And when you look at the orifice, it has a, a small pin size hole, depending on the size, of course. But this orifice here is a 0 0.024. And so it's the theory behind the microtubing and the orifice is that the microtubing is twice the size of its light orifice. So if this is a 0 0.024, then you're going to get an orifice uh, microtube size that's approximately twice the size. So in this case, about a 0 .048 microtubing that would fit that size. And so what that concept then does is that if you have a very viscous or heavy fertilizer, it's going to be pretty hard to push it through this little tiny 0 .024 hole. You'll create a lot of back pressure and it's, uh, it's hard to get it through there, especially on cold mornings when you're trying to plant. And so the microtubing basically allows you to open the size of that hole and allow more to flow through there and so and the, and the theory of course being that you have a larger size hole but you could always uh, just get a larger orifice make it the size of a tight uh, microtubing and you'll get the same result but there are reasons why we'll prefer one over the other and what we're going to do is basically here we have a system set up with an ag cell system and currently we're running microtubing on this setup as well. So this microtubing, as you notice here, there are different colors. Uh, here we have 11 different sizes of microtubing that allows us to accommodate. So it's no different than orifices. All the orifices come in different sizes, different colors, and you basically set the rate according to what type of application you're trying to, trying to apply. So the same concept then is for your microtubing. You're going to have a different size inside diameter on the tube for the different types of rates that you're trying to accomplish. So if you can look at that, um, there's a, the inside diameter. The blue one here is smaller than the green one. And the only reason you'll see this one wrapped in a dual jacket is because this is the most, one of the more popular sizes out there in in pro application, anywhere from four to six gallons an acre. Of course, combined together, they'll get you a broader and lesser range using both. But uh, for, for this conversation, we're basically gonna show what the differences are. Uh, like I said before, this is set up so that uh, we're going to test the microtubing first, we're going to do a catch test, and then we're going to test the disc orifice that, that's in its light or its partner in the disc orifice and show you the different results. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this setup and then I'm going to do a calculation and we're going to do a catch test. And that catch test is going to obviously catch a specific number, and then we're going to compare that to that in the orifice as well. So with our catch test, we have it set up. We have a fixed row of 30. In our console, we're going 5 miles an hour, and we're doing 5 gallons to the acre. So when I do my math, 30 inch spacing, 5 miles an hour, 5 gallons to the acre, fixed row of 30, that equates to 16.16 ounces per minute, and at one, and at 0.758 gallons per minute. So I'm going to do a catch test with the microtubing to catch 16.16 ounces. So what we're going to do is we're just going to randomly select a row here, and for one minute we're going to catch, do a catch test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. Okay, I'm going to grab a row here. They're all, as you, as you can see here, we've got an even flow coming out of all these here. Good steady flow. And, okay, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to get ready to go. Set, go.
Okay, we're closing in on one minute. Okay, done. So as you can see here, we're right at about 16 ounces, pretty dead on, on a really good catch. We were running, we're running right about 20 PSI on the system, had a good flow on it. And uh, like I said, they're all different size microtubing, and we'll base the microtubing on the viscosity of the liquid. And uh, next, of course, we'll test this with the same uh, like orifice and see what kind of catch test we get with it. Okay, so now what we've done is we've replaced the microtubing, so the microtubing that we tested earlier, we replaced it with its like in an orifice. So this is the orifice, and this orifice pinhole size, the microtubing is twice the size of this orifice. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test the same scenario, and as you can see here, with the microtubing, we were running a little bit over, right about 20 PSI. And now with the orifice, we're running 10 PSI. We're at five gallons an acre and five miles an hour on a six row 30. And when we did our calculation, we needed to catch basically right at about 16.16 ounces to the minute. So I'm gonna run my little timer here. I'm gonna set this down and we're gonna do another catch test and go. Okay, so we're going to do the catch test and basically find what we're catching with its like in an orifice. So if we're getting five gallons to the acre at five miles an hour, then no matter what pressure we're running, because it's just the diameter of the orifice or the diameter of the tube, we should still catch the same amount. Balls are floating nice and neat up there. Everything's looking good. Uh, the only difference, like I said, was the pressure. Okay, so we're now at 40 seconds, and everything's running smooth. Okay, another 10 seconds. We'll get this up there. So as you can see here, we did our one second catch, and as you see the line right there, we are right at 16.1 ounces in one minute, so dead on. So as you can see, there's no difference. We're running like orifices and microtubing. The catch is the same. We're getting the same rate, and the pressure on the orifice side was a little bit less pressure. So we are running about a 10 PSI lower pressure. And so we had a really good steady stream on there. So, so you can see there's no difference. So as you can see, when we did the comparison, whether it was the orifice or the microtubing, the pressure was a little different, but we still caught the same or exact rate that we needed to catch. So no difference in it. But there are reasons and times when we want to use the microtubing over an orifice. And as we mentioned on the onset, when we're using black label, which is really viscous, really heavy, it's hard to push it through that little orifice. It's a lot easier to push it through a larger hole diameter, uh, hydrohume. Uh, there's also one out there that's uh, molasses based, which is a QLF. And that's what we have in this system now that we, we change it out and put a QLF in here. And we have a whole series on how we use uh, viscous fertilizers on our GX6 dual manifold microtube system. But the other reason we use like to use microtubing is when you're doing a very, very low rate. So yeah, we could get an orifice that'll get us to that low volume, and low volume I mean is like one to two gallons per acre. The orifice struggles to go that low. Uh, for one reason, the pumps will struggle, but also you have a more of a chance of plugging a smaller hold orifice than you would the microtubing. And so you can see from the microtubing here, the hole is a lot larger than that gray orifice there. Uh, it's a lot more smaller. So what it does, what it allows you to do on lower rates, not only will it flow a lot easier because it's a larger diameter hole, but because it's an eight foot length, the back pressure that we're creating in this eight foot length allows us to get a lower rate much more efficiently. Whereas you basically created back pressure at one point here with an orifice. You're creating back pressure 
throughout this entire length of the eight foot tubing so that back pressure allows the pumps and the system to apply a lower application rate much more effectively than it would with an orifice. And so that's one of the scenarios where we like using microtubing. So when a customer calls up and says, I'm trying to apply one to two gallons an acre, we definitely go with the microtubing and our, our dual body nozzle setup. But when they go into a range of four, five, six, seven and above, we typically will use an orifice and we set it up accordingly. So it's those two basic scenarios, very low volume or high viscous or, or, or solutions that have little particles in it we'll go with our microtubing setup. And again, we have another video that shows using high viscous liquid, this is a, a molasses based liquid, that's uh, on our GX6 a microtube dual valve setup that you wanna look at and how we capture those rates as well.